Our first speaker is Dr. Daniel Cameron. Dr. Cameron is the current president of ILADS, that is the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society, and a pioneer in Lyme disease as an author of practice guidelines, analytic reviews, and clinical trials. He works in private medical practice in Mount Kisco, New York, and Dr. Cameron is widely recognized for conducting epidemiologic research while practicing medicine. Dr. Cameron. I appreciate coming. Now, this um, area, I've been to a couple times, but it's by far the most organized uh, group of experts uh, at community education on uh, working with children, working with schools that I've ever seen. So, uh, of the whole country, this is a, I'm really proud of this uh, group and happy to be here. Next. Okay, um, this is a dog with a tick, and so what's really important to know that uh, Dogs are also just as involved. So whatever you learn from dogs or cats, uh, anything else, cats don't get sick, dogs do. So you see that dark area behind its head? Next. You, gotta, you try to get below the tick uh, because if you squeeze the belly, you can regurgitate and throw up blood in the, and give the disease back to the, whoever gets bit. So you try to get it by the head. Next. Okay, the reason I put this here is that the larva is not a problem, but the nymph and the female adult, there's a black circle behind the head that you can see in both of them. But the nymph is what they talk about, this little pinpoint, you know, it's head of a pin. But I see a lot of doctors where in, when they see the adult female is so big, they say it can't be Lyme, must be a dog tick. And so very important to know that there's actually two sizes of ticks and play attention. Don't assume that if it's pretty good size or it's the size of a sesame seed that it's not Lyme. Next. Um, I put this next to each other because the adult female can be almost the size of a dog tick and you see the difference in the shield behind the head between a, a brown and a white camouflage versus the dark circle. Uh, so even when they're really full and full of blood and they look so big you can still see that dark circle. Next. Now this is the classic bullseye but Maybe 10, 15% of all rashes are bullseye with that, um, that clearing in the middle. Next. It can easily be kind of flat. In fact, there's more of these than any other kind of rash. And so anything over two inches, we start really thinking about Lyme. And we certainly don't need a blood test because if we went for a blood test, you're delaying treatment and uh, you may uh, never get a positive test. Uh, next. Sometimes uh, it can even look like a spider bite. And your doctor's so convinced that it's a spider bite, they'll give you an antibiotic for a spider bite, think it's an infection. They, I always prefer that to give an antibiotic that would work for both Lyme and uh, a spider bite. Like instead of using Keflex, might not use Ceftin, Augmentin. Uh, a lot of times this is behind the knee and you just think of both diseases. I also would rather treat longer than a week that you would normally do for a skin, a skin infection. And, and also just uh, follow the patient. Next. And then of course the Bell's palsy, you know, doesn't last long, but it's, uh, this one's more dramatic. Sometimes it's a little subtler. Next. And you can get a swollen knee. Now, lots of people think that, well, a knee is gonna be um, you know, ligament problems, meniscus tears, but Lyme tends to be this little sack of fluid called a synovial sac that's inside the and, and it doesn't have any place to go. So as it builds up fluid, it gets inflamed, it spreads out. So it will make the knee look pretty puffy. So when you press on the side of the knee, it's pretty sore. And, it, and most people have heard of bursitis, you know, up in the shoulder. It's not as painful as bursitis, but it's the same concept. And that's, that's exactly how they discovered Lyme in Lyme, Connecticut, in old Lyme, is this type of swollen knee. Next. If you look at those types of uh, definitions that the CDC puts out, you know, they have a pretty simple definition like a rash, certain type of meningitis, Bell's palsy, that type of arthritis with swelling, and a heart block, which is a current issue. And they say, well, you should have a positive ELISA and then at least five out of 10 bands on a Western blot, you know, the IgG type, and two out of three of the IgM type. 
Now the problem with that is that a lot of people don't get enough band, so they don't get a positive ELISA, or they have all kinds of other presentations that don't fit the definition, and they go to the doctor and the doctor says, well, you don't meet that definition. I, I don't know, let's go off to another disease or let's do another test in six weeks. Next. So if you get a tick, is uh, what are you gonna do? You know, if, you know, should you treat, should you not treat? Uh, some people get treated with two doxycycline pills, but the study uh, when they said two doxycycline works didn't study people longer than five or six weeks. And so I'm really not too worried about the immediate rash. I'm worried about chronic Lyme, late Lyme. And so I, I encourage people if they're gonna get treated for a tick, why not get treated the full course uh, in several weeks rather than just two doxycycline pills. Of also a concern is that that tick can often do a lot more to somebody than just a simple rash or simple arthritis.